At the Blue Lock facility, after losing the match to Team X, Team Z faces off against Team Y, whose best player is Okawa. Team Z plans a strategy and the match begins. The players of Team Z are doing well by passing the ball to each other, but things take a turn when they realize that Team Y have learned from their previous match against Team V and are playing defense. Team Z tries hard, but they could not break through their defense. The ball suddenly goes to a player named Nico, who comes with his counter strategy as Team Z's defense was open. He passes the ball to Okawa and Okawa goes for a perfect goal. This puts Team Y ahead 1-0 just before halftime. The second half begins and Team Y is no longer interested in attacking at all. They pass the ball among themselves to run down the clock. Even after changing tactics and strikers several times, Team Z hasn't been able to break through. Soon, Jean is the striker for Team Z and Isagi plays a long ball towards him. Even though Isagi had overshot the pass, Jean manages to reach it and get Team Z their first corner, being their first goal-scoring chance. Team Z gets all their players forward, but Isagi has a really bad feeling about it and races back to his own goal as the corner comes in. It's sent out of the box towards Nico. Isagi snatches the ball in time and takes a shot. The ball strikes the keeper, but Jean is there to score on the rebound and Team Z is finally back in the game. Isagi had realized that Nico was the one controlling the game and if he took care of Nico, Team Y was pretty much useless. Isagi and Nico seem to be the same when it comes to gameplay and Isagi can judge his every move. The game progresses and Isagi takes all the ball thrown to Nico. Team Z seems to be the team likely to score next, but Team Y still has a plan up their sleeve. At the final minute, all 10 outfield players of Team Y pace towards the goal in an all-out attack, startling Team Z. Nico leads the attack and quickly makes it to a one-on-one -on -one situation with the keeper. But instead of shooting, Nico passes to an open Okawa. The ball, however, is intercepted by Isagi. Isagi knew Nico would do that because before coming into Blue Lock, he would have done the same. Isagi then passes the ball ahead to Bakira and ultimately gets the ball himself and scores an outrageous goal, shattering the hopes and dreams of Team Y. The game is won and he stands before his vanquished enemies, having won the game. Team Z enjoys two stakes for the two goals they had scored and has a good celebration. However, even at night, the thrill of the game has taken all the sleep from Isagi's eyes. He gets up to see the footage from the game and finds Chickadee in the camera room, analyzing the game himself. He muses that he has what most players lack, spatial awareness, and that is his special skill. He can evaluate what is going to happen in the game and sniff out a goal before anyone else. Isagi thinks about it, and even though he can't control it, he knows that perhaps Chickadee was right. Isagi then praises the man for his skill, but Chickadee is still adamant that he doesn't want to reveal his skills. Instead, Chickadee tells him about the ACL tear that he had a few years ago and that coming to Blue Lock was his way of parting ways with the game. He was here to find an excuse to stop playing since he was scared that he would be injured again. Isagi argues that if Chickadee really wanted to lose, he would have by now and explains that the boy has a fighting spirit just like him. But Chickadee ignores him and walks away. Later, during practice, Ego announces the new rankings based on their performance and Isagi is now the best player among his teammates. He now has to increase his skill and get better at controlling his newfound ability, spatial awareness. Along with their rankings, the latest results from the table are displayed as well and four teams are now tied at second place with three points each while Team V is pulling away with six points. Their next game is against Team W and the whole group sits down after practice to strategize. Normally, Quan would be the one briefing the plan, but he's in a long shower, so Lemon, their regular goalkeeper, explains the plan as best he can. He seems to know the two main players of Team W, Kaisuk Wanama and his big brother Junichi Wanama. These two are really strong and have great coordination skills. All they had to do was stop the link-up between the brothers and they could win the game. Quan arrives just then and further explains a few more moves that they could perform during the match. This time they will play with three main forwards and rotate every 30 minutes. The next day, Team Z is ready to press on with the game and finally play some really good football against Team W. The two lead brothers from Team W start the game really strong and make pass after pass with each other. Chigori and Isagi are the two final center backs and they easily manage to get past Chigori. The two brothers try to manipulate Chigori and use his weak ACL to scare him from tackling them, but Isagi comes to the rescue just in time. He would not let them pass. Soon enough, with Isagi's defensive performance and everyone's collective efforts, Kwan scores three amazing goals and heading into halftime, they are up 3-0. 
The second half begins with Raichi, Bakaida, and Quan at the front, and everything is looking solid. However, the brothers from Team W seem to have dropped to midfield. They quickly steal the ball from Quan and race past everyone to make the score 3-1. to one. Quan seems to have lost concentration for just a second, thinking it just to be a one-time thing. The team resets and begins play, but yet again, Quan plays an underplayed back pass, and yet again, it is intercepted. The brothers score yet again, making the score 3-2, and suddenly the realization hits, all the goals up until now were scored by Quan, and all the strategies were made by him. Isagi could suddenly no longer find any passes, his spatial awareness was now useless. The ball is intercepted yet again, and while in defense, Quan purposely misses a header. The score was now 3-3, he had betrayed them. Isagi's eyes widen and he confronts his teammate about it. Quan comes clean after witnessing their loss against Team X and then barely beating Team Y with just a single goal. He could no longer trust in the team's ability, so he made a deal with Team W to become the top scorer and then get rid of his team. Quan was no longer their teammate, he was Team W's 12th man. The game suddenly turns on its head, it is now 12 against 10. Quan takes the ball away yet again, and this time, fires another shot. Thankfully, Lemon stops the goal from happening, but Team W was in total control at the moment. With five more minutes to go, Team Z was looking like they were headed out of blue lock, never to achieve their dreams. Chickadee gets frustrated at himself. He remembers the time back in his childhood when he used to have that hunger in him as a striker. When he was younger, the Wanama brothers arrived at his school claiming to be the next hot shots in football, so he had to show them with his skills how he was superior to them. His speed was something else and his close control made him a formidable force while the Wanama brothers couldn't even make the starting lineup. Chickadee was in his prime, he felt he could beat the world. However, the day came that he suffered an ACL tear, a dangerous, potentially career-ending injury for a football player to face. Chickadee was devastated and put to rehabilitation for several months. Since he was still young, he would recover, but the doctors told him that if there was a similar injury again, he would probably never be able to play again. These words got to Chickadee's head, and ever since, he was never able to use his full speed. It was as if he had shackles holding him down, put there by his own mind. The five remaining minutes of regular time are up, and a final three minutes are added. It was now or never. Isagi has the ball but has no one to pass to. In a desperate attempt to score, he goes in by himself, pushing a frozen Chickadee, and tries to score but fails. Chickadee is irritated but realizes that Isagi is just like he used to be, believing that he can be the best in the world and putting everything into football. Suddenly, the fire comes back to him. If in the next few minutes he couldn't do something, his journey in football would be over, and deep within, he did not want that to happen. Chickadee suddenly makes a run, and Isagi notices and makes a long pass towards the goal line. At this moment, the whole Team W is confident that this is just a wasted effort, but their eyes widen when they see Chickadee racing towards the ball. Even as the keeper is about to get it, he manages to get a toe on it and score the goal in the very final moments. The game is tied and the final whistle blows. Elsewhere, Team V has had another comprehensive 5-2 victory. The entire Team W is pissed at Quan and starts beating him up for not revealing that Chickadee had gotten over his leg problem even though Quan repeatedly states that he didn't know anything about it. They just pile over him until they are stopped by Isagi. After the game, though, Quan still hasn't changed, he's already in the room of Team V making the same offer that he made to Team W to let him score against them and he would reveal all the strategies of Team Z, unluckily for him. Team V is not a scummy bunch, they're confident in their own tactics and don't need to be told what to do and how to do it. The next team meeting starts off with bad news. Team W had drawn their game with Team Y, with both the teams now drawn level on points, and Team Z with a really bad goal difference. They had to win against Team V in order to qualify, which by itself is a daunting task. Not only was their team a man down now, but Team V was also ruthless with their goal-scoring ability. Quan still refuses to be part of the team, he's already the top scorer and doesn't need to participate. If Team Z loses, he still gets selected. Lemon explains that the strongest players from Team V, the Deadly Trio, had scored 18 goals in three games already. If they don't stop them, they can't win. In the Team V locker room, Nagi is back from training way earlier than the rest of his team. He explains that he just doesn't need to train that much, and Mikage knows that it is true. Only six months ago, Mikage, the son of a really rich businessman, was studying in a really good school. He was good at everything and had everything he wished for, but he enjoyed nothing. One day, he stumbled upon football, a sport that thrilled him. 
However, his once supportive parents were not okay with him being a football player since he had started so late, there was no chance he could make it pro. Mikage has to prove his parents wrong. He then stumbled upon the potential greatest football genius he had ever seen, Nagi, a man with such control that he could catch a falling cell phone on his foot. However, the man had no interest in football and wanted to live a slacker's life. Mikage promises to give him a chill life if he becomes the best footballer ever. With him back in Team Z's dressing room, Quan is still without question going to be useless in the next game, so they need to work with what they have at hand. Ego then shows up on the screen and shows the new rankings. Even though Quan practically cheated, he was still number one in the rankings. If they lose and none of them score more goals than him, he would stay in blue lock while the rest of them are eliminated. Ego states that all their goals until now have been good, but unless they can replicate those goals, it would all be considered luck. They must examine how, when, and under what conditions their weapon made the difference in their victory. Only when they have mastered repeatability can they advance. They should play the game as though they are destined to win rather than depending on chance to do so. Isagi is frustrated and heads straight to the practice field. He sees Barrow of Team X, the man had already scored 10 goals and since he was the top scorer in the entire building, he had already qualified. Isagi tries to see if he can learn something from Barrow, but the man is in no mood for Isagi. Instead, the two start going one-on-one. -on -one. Barrow muscles his way through Isagi and scores a screamer from 23 meters out into the top corner. They go again, despite Barrow being reluctant, and yet again Barrow scores another screamer, but this time Isagi realizes that Barrow has perfected his technique. This is what he needed to learn as well. He knew now that Barrow could score from 23 meters if he was given the chance, so he decides to restrict him from getting into that range. However, Barrow again surprises him by scoring a 27-meter screamer. Isagi thanks Barrow for helping him, even though all Barrow did was humiliate him. The game then begins the next day, and Team Z is surprisingly well prepared. They manage to avoid letting Mikage and Nagi to get past their defense and prevent Santetsu from getting into his long-range shooting. Isagi then gets the ball and plays a long ball toward Gagamaru, who makes a shot and misses barely. They are all fired up until the ball lands at Mikake's feet. He glances once at Nagi and launches a ball toward the goal, a ball so overplayed that the whole team lets it go, but Nagi doesn't give it up. He ends up scoring a brilliant goal out of nowhere. Team Z tries to shake it off and start an attack, but again the ball is stolen away and finds its way to Nagi. This time, the guy is surrounded, though surely he couldn't score is what everyone thinks, but he surprises everyone yet again by pulling off a bicycle kick out of nowhere. It was all too easy for a genius like him. 2-0 down, and this time Isagi tries to release Chickadee, their new secret weapon, but it turns out that Zantetsu is as fast as Chickadee and can cover all his moves. The man swipes the ball from Chickadee and launches a counter, scoring a phenomenal goal from far out. Team Z is devastated, they seem to have lost even before the first half was over. Their chance of victory was wearing thin, and so was the enthusiasm of the entire team. Everyone is disappointed, but Bajira is pumped up. He's excited that he's facing such an incredible team and wants to show that he can do incredible things too. Since only something magical could turn their games now, he decides to show off his hidden potential as the monster inside of him screams. Bachita gets the ball from Isagi and dribbles past everyone on the field. He amazes even the opponents with his skills and scores with the Rabona. In this pressure situation, the team finally gets pumped up again. The ball then goes to Kunigami and he knows that he can score if he gets the ball in a 23 meter range but the area before him is crowded and he has to take the shot now. He decides to trust his abilities and shoots from 28 meters out. The ball whizzes past the defenders and turns at the very last moment and enters the net making the score 3-2 heading into the second half. Team Z is still in the game with the score at 3-2, they are confident that they can win and so is Team V. Team V decides to continue their attack, but the defense will be increased by one more player with Zantetsu dropping back. The second half begins, and Isagi is the only one who hasn't really gotten a grip on the game yet, while all of his teammates are making brilliant blocks, saving the shots from entering their goal. He is still unsure if he can ever score and go beyond his limitations. The ball then reaches Chikadi, and Zantetsu is his marking man. Chickadee realizes that he cannot beat Zantetsu in a foot race in a short distance since his ability is boosted by acceleration, so Chickadee makes a 10-meter pass ahead to himself, knowing that at the longer distance, he can beat the man. He does just that, then races past the defenders, scoring the equalizing goal for his team. 
The score was 3-3 and just like to Japan in this World Cup, coming together into equalizing in the second half, this game is not over. The ball lands at Mike Hake's feet, who's shocked by the fact that the worst team in blue lock is actually competing with them and with 10 men at that. He remembers his past and how his parents always treated him like a baby, spoon-feeding him everything. He wanted to do something on his own strength, and that was football. Nobody would take that from him. However, when he looks around, he sees no space that he can utilize. His team is just as shocked as he is, and there seem to be no attacking options. At this rate, they would lose. Nagi, who's by the post waiting for the ball to arrive, notices Mike Hake's sad and dejected face. Suddenly, something clicks in him as well. It's like his abilities had finally awakened. He realizes that if he does nothing, their team will lose and it would be the first time that they would suffer a loss. Earlier, he didn't care what happened, but suddenly his passion for football is ignited by the idea of losing. Uncharacteristically, Nagi drops back and asks for the ball from Mike Hake, who passes it to him. This comes as a shock to the whole of Team Z. Nagi has never done this before and it's made it easier for them to defend. But now that he's in the game, both attacking and helping out defensively, Team Z may get overwhelmed. Nagi races with the ball and dribbles past one defender after another. To everyone's surprise, Suguri has a head start this time and beats Chickadee in the race to the ball. He looks up to see Nagi asking for the ball in the penalty area. Nagi usually never takes the initiative or even asks for the ball, but he passes it to him anyway. The ball floats into the air and Nagi receives it at a very tight angle. Shortly, he wouldn't be able to score from there, everyone thinks, yet Nagi not only takes the ball with grace but also manages to score an absolutely fantastic goal. The game turns on its head once again as Team V takes the lead 4-3. The one thing that Isagi and Team Z couldn't afford. With only 15 minutes left on the clock and Team Z one goal down, Isagi and his teammates know they have no choice but to attack after the kickoff. Bachita receives the ball from Isagi and charges forward while Isagi keeps thinking about how he can influence the game despite being one man down and trailing by a goal. He understands that conceding another goal would make a comeback nearly impossible. Isagi ponders how he can use his spatial awareness to change the course of the game and just then he figures it out. Jiggity receives the ball on the left flank again from Bachita and tries to outpace Tsuruji once more. However, this time Nagi is there to defend as well. Isagi intercepts the ball before it can reach Nagi, utilizing his new ability to spot a weakness in the opposing defense. Isagi then positions himself to exploit this weakness and makes a pass back to Chijiri, who cuts inside to take a shot. Although the shot is blocked, the ball falls to Gagamaru, whose attempt is also blocked. Finally, the ball falls perfectly for Kunigami, who places a perfect shot into the roof of the net, equalizing the game once again. Isagi cheers in happiness as he finally unlocks his ability and the goal goes just as he had planned. With his newfound ability to see into the future for brief moments, Isagi can anticipate how goals can be made and opponents outmaneuvered. The entire Team Z is ecstatic except for Quan, who is unsure of how he should feel at the moment. As the game remains drawn, Quan reflects on his past experiences remembering how he had once carried his weak school team to the regional quarterfinals with hopes of playing for the national team. However, he realizes that his teammates didn't share his ambition, leading to their eventual loss. Since then, Quan has worked for himself, but now he questions if that's the type of person he wants to be. With only five minutes left in the game, Team V plans to play from the back. However, Suruji notices Nagi's run and makes a long pass. Nagi races to the ball, pursued by Isagi, who knows that if he can get past Nagi, Team V will be forced to pass the ball to the other flank. However, Nagi surprises everyone by using his back to pass the ball to himself, evading Isagi and advancing toward the goal. Just as Nagi seems clear for a goal, Kulan tackles him to the ground, receiving a red card and leaving the field. With three minutes remaining, Mika K prepares to take a free kick, but Lemon anticipates that he will try to score himself. Lemon makes a massive save, but Nagi manages to chip the ball towards the goal. As Isagi holds his breath, Gagamaru makes a diving save, setting up a counterattack. Isagi races with the ball, with three teammates by his side. As they approach the opponent's goal, Isagi passes the ball to Kunigami for a long-range shot. However, Siddiqui slides in to make a tackle, sending the ball towards the sideline. With only seconds remaining, Raichi saves the ball from going out of bounds and passes it to Bakira. Bakira notices Isagi free at the back post and makes the pass to him. However, Nagi intercepts the pass, leaving Isagi unsure of how to outmaneuver him. Suddenly, Isagi remembers his strength in direct shots without any touches. 
As Nagi approaches him, Isagi slams the ball into the back of the net, winning the game for Team Z 5-4. The team celebrates their victory while Kwan looks on with mixed feelings. Konagami tries to involve Kwan in the celebrations, but Raichi reprimands him. However, it's apparent that the team has healed their differences and there's no bad blood between them. Later that night, Esagi and Bakira discuss their newfound abilities when they notice a team behind them who were leaving the Blue Lock facility because they were terminated. They encounter Nico, the top scorer of Team Y, who vows to defeat Isagi next time. Esagi smiles at him and tell him to bring on the challenge. If you enjoyed then leave a like and subscribe. And also write it down in the comments below.